Working with type in Adobe Photoshop. Here are some typographic terms that you'll find helpful when we're exploring how to use uh, type in Photoshop. Font is the different styles that we have of different letterings. Size is given in points. And uh, the larger the number, the bigger the size of the type. Uh, style could be bold, italic, semi-bold. And those represent different uh, styles of the same font. So an italic is more than just being a slanted version of the regular font. It actually has some adjustments to make it look more like a script. Color is basically the color of the text. It doesn't have to be black. Uh, it can be whatever color you want. Uh, alignment, left, right, center, those are all possible. Kerning is the spacing between two pairs of letters. Uh, for instance, the letter A and V, if you didn't apply kerning to it, it would look very far apart. Uh, if you just set it to each character takes up the same amount of space to the left or the right. So what you need to do is move the V slightly to the left to get it closer to the A. Um, this visually gives the appearance of uh, an even look. Um, even though the letters are intruding into each other's space. Uh, so kerning refers to doing that between two pairs of letters. Uh, kerning is built into most professional typefaces. Um, so you should always use metrics first um, or set it to optical if you're making some kind of adjustment to the, the font uh, with a horizontal or vertical scale that is distorting it in some way, then the kerning that's built into the font is probably no longer relevant. And you either need to manually kern or uh, apply the optical kerning. Tracking is like kerning over a span of letters. Uh, so it's basically just moving the letters closer or further apart. Letting. Now we talked about size uh, given in points, so 12 points, but uh, where does the next line of text go? That's what letting is referring to. Um, so if your font is 12 point, and you are applying 14 points of letting, that means in addition to the size of the font, there's going to be two points between it and the next line. This helps uh, keep letters from crashing against each other. Um, it is also possible to set a font to, for instance, 72 point and have the letting set to 60 point. This is common on headlines uh, where you want um, the lines of the headline as close together to, as possible. Um, to you know, save space and also to get a, a, a visual look. You just need to make sure that the ascenders and the descenders of the font are not crashing into each other. A horizontal scale allows you to make the horizontal scale of the font uh, larger or smaller. So basically make it thinner or fatter. A vertical scale is making it taller or shorter. Uh, and this is a distortion. Uh, you probably should use this with care uh, extreme settings may look very inappropriate. And a lot of times you can choose a different font style uh, if you want just a condensed font rather than using uh, one of the scaling options. Uh, so that will generally give you a designed look rather than something that is like, okay, we just jammed this in there. Line length refers to how long the line is <laughs> and why is that relevant? Well, if you have multiple lines of text, it turns out that when you have long lines of text, you need to have a little bit more space so that when the uh, viewer's eye looks from the end of the line to go to the beginning of the next line, if the lines are too close together, it can be very difficult for the reader to get to where he or she needs to get to see the next line of text. Uh, so being aware of your line length, if you have a short line length, hey, you can apply, you know, less letting. However, if you have a longer lo line length, you probably need to have more space between the lines to make it easier to read. So I have taught a, a four credit class in Photoshop. And so these exercises and slides are from that class. Uh, we're not going to cover all the things that we talk about in the four credit class, uh, because one of them on its own will probably take us an hour. Uh, so go ahead and sign up for the four credit class if you'd like to learn uh, some of these techniques in more detail. Um, so essentially, there are five types of text that we work with in Photoshop. There's point text, 
where you click on the text tool and then you just click on a single point on the canvas that creates point text. Paragraph text is very complicated. Instead of just clicking on the canvas somewhere, you click and drag the mouse and it draws out a rectangle for you. This is where you can put text into. So you can start typing and when you get to the edge of the rectangle, it'll go to the next line automatically. Uh, it's actually not complicated. Uh, type in a path. Uh, it can be on a closed path, like a shape outline, or on a line, which can be curved or straight, uh, which is an open path. Warped text is an uh, opportunity that we have to easily add interest uh, to text in fun ways. Another fun way to add interest is with clipped text. And this is where we take um, an image and instead of having um, the text be just one color, we can apply the image into the text. And so the text has texture using clipped text. Um, so what we won't talk about is type in a circle. Uh, Photoshop makes it a little difficult to do this, so it, it takes a while to explain. However, let's talk about type on a line. Essentially, type on a line is very simple. What you want to do first, though, is draw some kind of line. And I'm assuming you want a curved line. So look, the pen tool is kind of like notorious in Adobe applications as being very difficult to learn. However, there is an easier version of the pen tool that we're going to use um, because it creates great results with just a few clicks. So let's take a look at what this is. Uh, we're going to use the tool called the Curvature Pen Tool. All you have to do is click on at least three different points and be amazed. Go to the regular pen tool, click and hold, and then choose Curvature Pen Tool. Now all we have to do is click three times on the canvas and it draws a nice curved line for us. Type on a line. Um, we're going to choose the Horizontal Type Tool and we'll set our options uh, align left or right. Uh, depending on where you want to click on the line to start typing, uh, that will vary. So if you want to start typing on the left side of the line, and that's where you want your text to start flowing from, uh, click there. Otherwise, uh, align right, and you can click on the right side of the line. Uh, you can set your font size and color to anything that you want, and then just click anywhere on the path, and then type your top text. So the text will go on top of the line. Um, and then if it turns out that, oh, I clicked somewhere on the path I didn't intend to, you need to uh, switch to the path selection tool and adjust the starting and ending points. So now let's put some text on this line. We'll switch to the text tool. And horizontal te type tool is what we want. And then I'll just uh, set some options here. So Myriad Pro. Um, we can change the font style to anything that we want. Um, I'm going to choose marker felt. And then it's set to thin. I want it to be wide. So that's the different styles that are available. And I'm not sure what type I want as far as the size. But let's go to 36 point and we'll see if that the works. Um, next, uh, we can change the alignment. Um, in this case, do I want it to be in the center or uh, right aligned? Um, I'll stick with left aligned. And then we'll choose a color here. And how about um, orange? Something like that. And then I'll press OK. And now here's the tricky part. If I just click anywhere and I'm not on the line, it's not going to put the text on this line. So what I need to be looking at is the outline around the eye beam uh, mouse pointer. It will change shape when I get close to the line. And it goes from this rectangle to this kind of curvy line. And when it gets that curvy line, it means, oh, you're wanting to type on this line. Great. So once it does that, I'll click anywhere on the line. And anywhere I uh, click on the line, that's going to indicate this is where I want the type to start. Um, so I'll just put, um, how's it going? And I see that it's very small. So let's change the point size. Uh, 72 point. 
oh, no, it's not on the line. So we need to make it a bit smaller. Um, another way to change the point size is we can click and hold on this and then drag our mouse and it will dynamically change the, the size of the font. Uh, alternatively, if you have uh, the highlight set in any uh, box in Photoshop and then you use the arrow keys up and down on your computer keyboard, uh, you can adjust like that. So with the mouse or with the arrow keys, or you can just type in a number. Anyway is uh, a way of changing values in Photoshop. Um, so let's see. Now this is wide, but it's not as wide as I would like it to be. So it would be terrific if I could change that somehow. Turns out we can. Um, there's just some more options we can get by clicking on this little folder next to the no smoking sign. So I'll click on that. And then let's change the scaling, the horizontal scale. So currently it's 100%, which is what the designer of the font intended. We're going to go beyond those intentions. And I'm just going to drag it over, and you'll see the number will increase um, until we get to 120. Okay, now that's perfect. How's it going? Great. It's going really great. Um, now, here is uh, a problem that you might have experienced uh, when you clicked on a line. Um, sometimes when you click on a line, you unintentionally get a little too, little too far or too uh, close to the edge, and you would like to change that afterwards. Do you have to redaw the line and do all this work all over again? Nah, you don't need to do that. So what we'll do instead is we'll go to this tool that's underneath the text tool, the path selection tool. And as we once again hover our mouse over the line, you'll notice that it changes shape. So right now, if I am on the left side of the line, it shows us an arrow pointing to the right. This is showing you, hey, do you want to set the beginning part of where text falls on this line here? And so if you do, you just click there. And if you click and hold, and then you drag down, something weird happens. Okay, now the text is on the bottom of the line. That's obviously not what we want. So what we'll do is we'll move while we're dragging the mouse up. Um, now, similarly, you can uh, edit where the end of the line should go. So if, for instance, you don't want it to go all the way to the edge of this, uh, you can actually set this further in. How is it? Um, but that's not what we want, so I'm just going to Command-Z to undo that. Warped text. Uh, with any of your text selected, um, click anywhere to type, and then go to the options bar at the top of the screen and look for this icon. It's the Create Warped Text button. And then that'll pop up a dialog box where we can adjust the settings to taste. Choose the Horizontal Pipe tool again, and then click anywhere. And you'll notice that it is retaining the same font and style and color that we chose before. Um, this is because Photoshop has what they call a sticky interface. Anytime that you use a tool, you use another tool, and then a day or so later you come back and use uh, the type tool or whatever, the brush tool again, Photoshop remembers, oh, this is how they like to have that tool set up. I'll keep it that way for the next time they want to use it. Um, so this is uh, sometimes a great feature. Uh, sometimes it's like, I just want to start over from scratch, um, which is what we want to do. So let's figure out how to do that. Um, in this instance, I'm going to just click cancel and then uh, that gets rid of that type layer. And then I'll go to the little representation of this tool on the options bar. There's a little arrow pointing down. I'll click on that, that brings up this little pop-up. I'm clicking on the gear icon to access some settings. And the one we're interested in is reset tool. I'm going to select that one. And then you'll notice we're back to the Myriad Pro regular 12 point, which is perfect. OK, that's a great starting point. Um, so once again, we'll choose the font. Um, let's do something interesting. Um, See, what will look good with, you know, Impact is always a good font for like memes and things. So why don't we play with that one? Uh, it's nice and chunky too. All right. And is this the chunky 
font. All right, we'll make that a little bigger. So I selected all the text and then I'm gonna change the font size. And then I'm gonna change the alignment. So uh, where I clicked is going to be in the center. I'll use the move tool to move it over. Okay, so now it's in the center. That's looking good. I'll change back to the type tool. And then I'll select all the text again and then choose this warped text option. So I click on that and then it prompts us to choose a style. And there are a few different styles that we can choose from. Um, so let's see what arc does. Oh, that puts the text in a nice arc. Um, and we can change how much it's bending. So is it bending down or is it bending up? Um, is the distortion on one side or the other? And we can also change the, uh, the vertical distortion. So we can go nuts with this. Now, if we want to go to nuts and you want to get back, uh, you can hold down the alter option key and then the cancel button turns to reset. And this is true in a lot of dialog boxes in Photoshop. So I click there and back to none. Uh, so let's try one of the other styles. Um, how about wave? Okay. I wonder if we could get that bend to be a little more extreme. Okay. What about changing that? Oh goodness, that's an illegible mess. <laughs> yeah, so you can go very funky on this. Uh, just by changing these three different settings. Um, let's see. Let's do, I think I was thinking flag. And then, you know, this has gotten too far out of line. So let's do a, a reset. And let's choose flag again. And then let's see. Yeah, that's what I was hoping that it would do. Okay. So 100% that way. We can make kind of do a boogie. How exciting. Uh, <laughs> now here is the fun part. Clipped text. Which is where we're going to put an image into the text. So clipping layers are what we're talking about to achieve this effect. Uh, basically a clipping layer uh, controls visibility of a layer based on the contents of another layer. Essentially the layer beneath acts as a mask for the layer above. So it reveals and hides things. And this is like a reverse Uno card, but for masks. Making text have texture is easy and fun. Just find an image with texture, open it in Photoshop, and then click on the lock icon in the layers panel to unlock it. This will allow you to move the stacking order of the layers. Add your text, and then move the text layer below the image. And this is why we unlock the image at the first, because we actually want the text to be below the image. Next, Alt or Option click between the image and the text layer, and this will clip the image to the layer below, which is text. So this will give the effect of having the text have the image inside it. And that's it. So first we need some kind of image that we want to put into the text. Hopefully something with a little texture to it. So it'll give us some interesting uh, effects rather than just having a solid color. Uh, let's uh, look at um, maybe a field Okay, and so we have some field of wheat, field of grain, dark and ominous fields. Uh, okay, sunflowers, that might be interesting. Okay, so we have kind of the sunflower and sky, and there's kind of this, you know, delineation between the sky and the field. So that might be an interesting thing to have half the letters in the sky and the other half in the field of sunflowers. So let's download that and we'll see how that works. Now on the Mac, this will open by default in preview. Um, we wanna work on this in Photoshop instead. So I'll just go to Photoshop and then I'm gonna open that file. Um, it's in my downloads folder. And there we go. So now, first step is to unlock this layer. So I click on the lock icon on the layers panel and it changes from background to layer zero. 
Now I can reposition this layer if I want to move it to the top of the bottom, whatever I want to do. Background layer is always at the very bottom of the layer stack. But for this instance, we need the text to actually be below the, the image. So we need to unlock the image first. With the type tool, I'm just going to click and then we'll type happy holidays. And then we'll make it super big. And we'll add an exclamation point. There we go. And then I'm changing the orientation or the, the alignment. So it's left aligned. Just it'll be easier to deal with that way. And then I'm using the move tool to kind of move it into place. And I think that's probably where it'll look good. Now, the next step is to move the type layer below the image layer. So, or I could move the image layer above the type layer, either way. So let's move the image layer above the type layer. Now the type has disappeared, but it hasn't been forgotten. Um, what we'll do to get this image to uh, conform to the type is on my computer keyboard, I'm holding down the Alt or the Option key. And then as I hover my mouse over the little split between the two layers, you'll notice that it changes uh, from a finger to a little icon uh, with the arrow pointing down. So if I click there, it will clip the image to the text layer. Um, and yeah, this is looking interesting, but um, it's a little distracting seeing all these uh, checkerboard pattern uh, representing transparent pixels. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go to the little yin and yang, and I'm going to add a solid color. And then it could be anything. Let's choose a darker color. Um, so maybe a dark green. Like that. And then once again, we need this to be uh, below everything else. So I'm just going to drag this down and watch where the little uh, blue line is. And there we go. So now happy holidays.